Hello, dear students. Um, I welcome you to my class, Introduction to Computers for uh, Business Management Students of the uh, first semester. Uh, today, I'm going to discuss with you the process of building the information system. Uh, information system is a very significant uh, software application, especially for the uh, business management and other organizations. So in this lecture, uh, I will discuss uh, uh, the uh, different methods and ways to develop the uh, software. Oh, dear students, we discussed uh, uh, in previous lecture that what is information, what are the components of uh, information systems and how it works, uh, what uh, components or systems are required uh, to run the information system. In today's lecture, I will discuss you the process of making the information system because you are the students of business administration and uh, when uh, you will be appointed as a manager or on different uh, managing positions, you must know the development of uh, the information systems that uh, you may take uh, up the job or you may look after uh, your subordinates or the development set up properly. So, you, if you remember, I told you previously that what is information. Again, I uh, tell you uh, one or two uh, definitions of the information system. Then we will move to the uh, development uh, process of the information systems. So, information systems are uh, commonly called the IAs, is the study of uh, complementary networks of hardware and software that people and organizations used to collect, filter, process, create, and distribute data. Another definition of uh, information system uh, is uh, information systems are combination of hardware, software, and uh, telecommunication networks that people build and use to collect, create, and distribute useful data, typically in organizational strength. So information systems are interrelated components working together to collect, process, store, and disseminate inf information to support decision-making, <coughs> sorry, uh, coordination, control analysis, and visualization in an organization. So uh, as, you, um, as you can see, uh, these definitions focus on <coughs> uh, two different ways of describing information systems. Uh, that are the components that make up an information system and the role that those components play in organization. So we discussed both means the components and the role uh, that those components play in an uh, uh, organization discussed in the previous lecture on the basics of information uh, systems that is also available uh, online. So today we just uh, uh, going to discuss the building information systems. So building information systems, why uh, should we uh, develop the information system to uh, run the organization or for the organizations? So what are the problems there? So uh, the major problem is that, that there's an in, uh, inefficient uh, manual process for capital expense reports, uh, commonly called the CR, means <clears throat> from the input to output, all work is uh, done in uh, is uh, done manually in the several organizations uh, if they are not using the information system. And they face several problems uh, regarding uh, the calculation, regarding the management, and even uh, in taking the <clears throat> proper decision. So therefore, information systems uh, enable organizations to solve all the problems of organization and run the organization is per uh, modern trends of the digital world. So the solution is basically IS applications. Because IS application or information system application provides master data management and process uh, automation software that enables uh, uh, enterprise organizations to go faster, be more agile, and improve the quality of their uh, most important data. So uh, they can compete uh, and thrive in the digital world as per uh, the current requirement. If, you, if the end organization is not using the information system, definitely uh, it uh, does not compete the current requirement of the digital uh, world. Therefore, the business 
uh, uh, does not uh, enhance or improve our organization, that if the public or private organization can it uh, reach the target which uh, the, uh, that organization has uh, mentioned uh, for. Uh, so, <clears throat> basically, in solution of what happens, it demonstrates the use of information system to streamline and redesign business process. Because in manual, you cannot achieve the targets or you cannot um, uh, develop as uh, the uh, IS using organizations are developing. So definitely in this way, if uh, any organization is not using the information system, it has to redesign the business process of that organization by developing the information system. So <clears throat> it illustrates ability of uh, means uh, solution, uh, illustrates ability of information systems to automate uh, uh, process, radically reduce costs and time. So it's a very important thing. In the manual, your cost uh, increases and the time, uh, any process take more time to finish it. But in information system, all things are going automatically. Therefore, cost and time reduces and uh, it affects on the uh, proper financial and e economical position of uh, an organization. So, for example, an uh, 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 is a, a solution. Uh, it's a, a workflow software for uh, automating business farm development and uh, uh, integrating uh, with the existing chair point and SAP systems. Uh, mostly uh, the big and organized organizations are using the SAP and this type of the solution. But in the organization, uh, if it wants, uh, it, it, it may build its own uh, solution as well. So <clears throat> now uh, there were some structural organizational changes uh, uh, enabled by the information technology. So if you are uh, your organization uh, is using or any organization is using the information system, what will happen? Automation will be done. I mean, what happened in the automation? Automation basically increases the efficiency of the work, efficiency of work uh, and the process, and it replaces the manual tasks uh, which are done in the organization. So manual tasks uh, make problems. Sometimes a record is uh, stolen, sometimes a record is uh, uh, vanished out due to any issue, any problem. So if you are making the system automated, automatic, your data will be alive and safe and secure uh, all the time, means uh, uh, 24 by 7 by 12. And another thing is a rationalization of the procedures. So rationalization of procedures basically streamlines standard operation, operating procedures of the organization. And it happens because of the information system. So often, uh, found in programs for making continuous quality improvements, means uh, uh, total, uh, uh, what uh, is it called, the total quality management and Six Sigma. So Six Sigma, you know, uh, Six Sigma is uh, basically, uh, it is a set of techniques and uh, tools for process improvement. So the Six Sigma strategies seek to improve manufacturing quality by identifying and uh, removing the causes of uh, defects and uh, minimizing uh, availability in manufacturing and uh, business process. And uh, then the business process is redesigned. Uh, so <clears throat> business process redesigned, uh, what happens in this? It analyzes uh, the organization and all the resources of organization, all type of the resources of the organization, and simplify and redesign the business process to uh, make the organization digital. I mean, digital means that organization may use the information technology tools and techniques, including the information systems. And um, this process means the business uh, process uh, redesign recognizes uh, recognize the workflow uh, comma, uh, and uh, combine the steps and eliminate the repetition. You see, in the manual system, what happens? Repetition occurs time to time. And they, they, they that make problem and create the vagueness and confusion as well. If in any transaction repetition occurs, that will make you problem till it identified and solved. And uh, another uh, uh, 
benefit is the paradigm shift. You see, in the, if we will not change ourselves, we will not uh, change to the current world requirement, digital world, the global globalization requirements. Uh, we cannot uh, develop at all. So, uh, information systems paradigm shifts means they rethink nature of the business. Now, the nowadays businesses and the nature of business is not same. It was before 2008, in 90s, 80s, 70s, and so on. Now, business structures are changed. So, rethink nature of the business is the requirement of the information technology and information systems. And define the new business model that take up your business at a high level and that organize your organizations uh, properly and take a, a proper job from uh, your uh, employees and so on. Because if uh, any organization is uh, not using uh, information technology tools or information systems, you see what happens there. The soft corruption happens there. Soft corruption is not uh, like the hard corruption. But soft corruption makes the people lazy, makes the people uh, some specific uh, people may not come on the time, may, may go before the time, and may leave the assignment for tomorrow. Because who will take them? But if uh, organizations are using the information system, information system will note their uh, attendance, information systems will note their working progress and all the processes and activities uh, occurs in the organization. Therefore, organizations push up. So it defines a new business model and change the nature of the organization. Remove the soft corruption and it make the organization a uh, very uh, developing organization. It changes the nature of the organizations. So business process management, now there are different models, different methods by which you may develop the information systems. Several models are here that may be the traditional, that may be the red list. So one is, uh, I just, uh, I will take you to the system development life cycle of the oldest uh, system of the development. But before this, I discuss you the business process management, commonly called the BPM. So uh, BPM is a basically a variety of tools methodologies to analyze, design, optimize, and optimize the process. And used by firms, organizations, corporations to manage business process redesigns. So there are some steps in um, BPM. Number first, identify process for change. But what model, what methodology, what software, what tool you should use to change the uh, process of your organization or um, for example, manual to digitization or other processes. Analyze the existing process, how it works, what are the topics of uh, this process, what are the benefits or advantages of this process, how you uh, get loss from this process or how you get benefit from this uh, uh, process, you must uh, analyze it. And then after clearing these two steps, uh, then you should go uh, to design the new process. Now, new process will be developed on basis of this because the new process will look at uh, the mistakes uh, occurs in these systems and uh, as well as the advantages. So this will be new and very good process for any organization. And after the designing development of the process, implement the new process in the organization and continuous measurement. So it depends on organization either it own the complete digital process or run parallelly I mean, using the manual and uh, digitally at initial stage, and after uh, some specific period, they uh, move to the uh, shift to the totally new process. So this is also a way or a method or the uh, process uh, uh, tool to change the organization from your old system to new system. So, but building uh, now, I tell you, I take you to the system development life cycle. So building the information management system basically are designed to help to home uh, the system help the managers, the CEOs stay on the top of their operations, the top layer who performs their duties by gathering and uh, presenting information about uh, resource use, space design, and the physical assets. So this system is a benefit as far managers, CEOs, and so on. So uh, there may be alternative methods to uh, 
as I told you, the PPM. So maybe the traditional life cycle and the prototyping and user development. Are you some organizations are using the MS Word, MS Excel, and other things of software packages and outsourcing to the keep the records safe? Though the, I don't believe that. Uh, no doubt these are good from the, the manual system, but uh, there should be a specific uh, system for organization. So the system life cycle is the oldest, but a very good method for building the information system that help you in making the organization or making the application system for the organization. So system development life cycle commonly called the SDLC. This is the SDLC, system development life cycle. So it is a process used by the software industry to design Software industry means software who develop the software or software houses. So why they use uh, SDLC? They use SDLC to design, develop, and test high quality softwares. In high quality software. So the SDL, SDLC or system development life cycle aims to produce a high quality software uh, that meets to meets or exceeds customer um, expectations and uh, reaches. <clears throat> Uh, completion within uh, times and uh, uh, cost estimates. So SDLC is the acronym of the software development life cycle and um, organized a way to build the information systems. So it is also called as a software, uh, software development process. Means, uh, 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 so in a, basically uh, an effective system development life cycle should result in a high quality. So as I told you, there are several systems, but SDLC is a very good uh, system uh, that is uh, really an uh, effective system um, in uh, to design the high quality software. Uh, so SDLC is a basically framework uh, defining tasks performed at each step in the software development process. So the ISO IEC uh, 1.207 is an international standard for software life cycle process. It aims to be uh, the standard that defines all the tasks required for development and maintaining software. So SDLC is, a, as I told you, it's a process followed for a software project uh, within a software organization. It consists of a, a detailed uh, plan describing how to develop, uh, maintain, replace, and uh, alter or enhance uh, a specific software. So the life cycle defines the methodology for improving the quality of software and the overall development of process. So there are uh, some using the, the uh, six uh, phases, some uses nine phases, some uses uh, 14 phases. I discussed you. Uh, because uh, it's, uh, per your, this, if you are a student of the first semester, so I discuss you the five phases of um, SDLC uh, to show that you may understand otherwise. So it uh, starts definitely from the uh, planning, then defining, designing, building, testing, and then the development. These are the uh, basic steps uh, of uh, typical software development life cycle. So if you look at uh, this figure, so phase one needs the analysis, uh, needs uh, planning and uh, requirement analysis. Then in phase two, the system design, uh, and uh, means after the planning uh, and uh, requirement analysis, you got the problem and you got the data uh, and you got the uh, running system if available. And then uh, uh, you analyze all these things and design a new system. So after designing new system, um, then, then the phase three is the development because design in new design and here the development means the coding and uh, implementation acquisition will happen. So acquisition and road development will happen. And for four is implementation will be installed. Now it is another process how it will be installed either in a space or direct, the directory or in a different parts and Phase five is the maintenance. This is a very important because without maintenance of the software, no software can run. And if you face 
problem and maintenance or any organization want to modify or design or develop uh, uh, the software with the new uh, attributes then it will start again from the phase one so uh, is that uh, phase one basically needs the analysis it means the user identify a need so the requirements in, uh, in this requirement analysis performs important role. So requirement <clears throat> analysis is the most important and fundamental stage in the SPLC. Um, it, is a, uh, it is performed uh, by the senior member of the team with the inputs from the customer, the sales department, market surveys, and uh, domain experts, means knowledge engineers in the industry. So this information, uh, then used to plan the basic project approach and to conduct product feasibility study in the economical, operational, and the technical areas. So, plan, uh, since the uh, planning for the quality assurance requirement and uh, identification of the risks associated with the project is also done in the planning stage. So, the outcome of uh, outcome uh, outcome of the technical uh, feasibility study is to define the various uh, technical approaches that can be followed to uh, implement the project successfully with the minimum risk. It's important. Is um, risks will minimal, minimum the project will be uh, successful. So it solves the basically three main problems. Define the problem that what is the problem of organization, why they are going to develop the, or why they are going to get the information system, and what is problem there? Uh, what is problem with their manual system? What is problem there? Running the information system and so on. So different problem may be there with the organization. So these problems may be collected and analyzed properly. Then after the analysis of the problem, uh, present the possible solutions that uh, these are uh, possible solution means the optimized solutions, best solutions to the organizations that organization may get rid of the problems and then determine the best uh, of the, determine the best solution you present three four five how, how much uh, solutions to the organization and then determine the best solution means optimized solution to the organization that this solution is a very good that may solve your uh, problems and then the technology is analyst talk with the user that what are the uh, users problem is what are problems uh, with the users working in that organization, these are very important. I think users know better than the, the managers. Because the user is directly connected to the software. So uh, that may user may be of the manual system or user may be of the uh, software system. So user may tell you the original problems and then define the problems uh, of those users using a description tool. There are different tools available and then solution should be presented to a manager that your user, the user of the system, user may be internal, that is the, the employee of the organization, user may be uh, external, that is the customer of that organization or the client of that organization. So <clears throat> both of these problems of both users, internal and, and external may be collected and uh, analyzed properly and then the solution may be presented to manager that internal users are facing such type of the problems and the external Users are uh, facing these type of the problems, and our solution is that this one to solve the problems of uh, both internal and external users. So in this first phase, you will write these all things and uh, present to the uh, manager. So the, even the, the once the requirement uh, analysis is the done. Uh, the next step uh, is to definitely clearly and document uh, in this you will uh, document the product requirements even so and get them approved from the customer or the market analysis so in this you will analyze the problem of uh, external user client of customer so this is done through uh, an SRS software requirement specification uh, document uh, which consists of all the Product requirements uh, to be designed and uh, developed uh, uh, during the project life cycle. Then uh, go for the uh, system design. System de uh, design is basically I means solution is defined. So um, the, 
what happens? The SRS is the reference for uh, product architecture, the software uh, requirement specification. Uh, uh, is the reference for the uh, product uh, architects to come out uh, with the best uh, architecture for the product to be uh, developed. So based on the requirements specified in SRS, you really more than one design approach uh, for the product architecture is uh, proposed and uh, documented. Uh, documented. So in uh, you may call it documented in the DDS. DDS means the design document specification. So this uh, DDS or design document specification is uh, reviewed by all the important uh, stakeholders. And, uh, stakeholders of the organization that may be the owner managers okay, your partners and clients uh, users so on and based on the various parameters is the risk assessment product uh, robustness design modularity budget and the time constraints the best design approach is a selected for the product so solution what in defined that that uh, data storage how data will be storage and how storage capacity is required to user interface um, what type of the user interface is required to, to organization uh, because external user that could be the uh, user friendly that clients partners and uh, internal users may use and the third one reports reports are significant so in the reports Managers uh, may take decisions, CEOs may take decisions, partners may take decisions. Because the report tells you all the position of the organization, that may be the financial, that may be the hiring position, the administrative position, employees working position, time position, and all the aspects which you want, you may get through the uh, reports. So several de uh, design tools are here, like the type, uh, top down, top down design, bottom up design, is the focus uh, the structure from bottom to top uh, that how it will be installed how user enter from uh, login to uh, product uh, login to output uh, login to sign out so what process is used you may uh, analyze or use these tools uh, to uh, use the uh, uh, to analyze the the development or uh, the system design uh, to the and just that how the software will work. So case tools used to build the prototypes. Prototype is a basically basic uh, uh, application system that uh, tell you that how your software will be. So computer aided software engineering may be used. So in this stage of SGLC, the actual development uh, uh, starts and the product is built. So programming code is generated as per uh, uh, what I told you, the DTS. Uh, so uh, during the, this stage, so if the design is uh, performed in a detailed and organized manner, code generation can be uh, accomplished uh, uh, without uh, much hassle. So development must follow the coding guidelines defined by the organizations and uh, programming tools like uh, compilers, interpreters, and uh, debuggers, etc. So are uh, used to generate the code. Uh, different high-level programming languages such as C, C++, Java, PHP, and search, Python, and so on uh, uh, may be used for coding. So programming language is uh, chosen with the uh, respect to the type of software being uh, developed. So and this solution is a uh, basically, uh, so, uh, so in the purpose of this phase is uh, to provide solution to the uh, problem. What uh, you built uh, by the coding, by the software develop, uh, development that is a present page. And programmers play a key role, as I told you, they have to code, they have to, uh, code the design, what uh, is designed in this phase that may be uh, coded in uh, the development phase. So programmers are very much important. Programmers means the computer language programmers and solution um, may be built locally. This is very much important. Sometimes um, uh, we uh, use uh, the built-in software. They are good, they are good. 
but they cannot fulfill the require, complete requirements of organization. So the local uh, development uh, may uh, fulfill all the requirement of software and uh, organization, sorry, and solve all the problems. Therefore, solution may be built locally. And technically, writers create instructions Solution is a repeated, we tested as well. Okay, documentation is a very much, a very yeah, much important. So uh, the technical writers should write from the problem the gathering to the development. All step they should write. This will be a very good manual. Uh, so what will happen? Uh, there are two benefits. One, again, if you organization want to notify the system or aid something, that uh, manual will be helpful. And also, this will be the technical uh, helpful that will help the users in um, uh, utilizing or uh, using the software. Then the uh, phase four is the implementation. So, uh, but when uh, you develop the software, keep in mind testing the product. Testing is also important. So, definitely, uh, that is uh, the before installation testing is uh, very much important. So this stage is usually a subset of all the stages that, uh, as in the modern system development lifecycle models. So the, the testing activities are uh, mostly uh, involved in all the stages of the SDLC. However, this stage refers to the testing only stage of the uh, product where a product detects, uh, where product uh, 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 detects all uh, means the uh, what uh, well, uh, pro product uh, may be defected even. So if the product is uh, defected, it will be tested properly. So the product defects are reported. Means any defect is uh, found, it will be reported, tracked, fixed, and uh, retested until the uh, product reaches the quality standards defined in the SRS. So what you mentioned in the SRS, the project should be like that. So in this testing process helps a lot. So testing must be done before implementation at uh, the development uh, level. Also, it, it would be very good if uh, it is tested uh, uh, from the user side. Uh, uh, that would be very good. That will uh, make it easy uh, after installation. So in this phase, implementation, installation of the hardware and the software uh, is uh, done. So users must convert to the solution. This is a very significant uh, phase because now the development uh, product is uh, installed. Uh, uh, that may be in, uh, with the hardware and the software. So there are different ways. It depends on the organization and the, the software industry or software uh, house. Uh, what is their mutual understanding there? Now uh, one way is the direct conversion. Means install the software, replace the uh, previous system with a new one. Means start uh, working our previous system and they start working with the, uh, the new system. This is a one way. So this would be beneficial for those organizations where trained employees are uh, available. But if there are problems, so then uh, one should not go for that. So this is uh, important because in deployment, uh, what happens? Once the product is uh, tested and they're ready to be uh, deployed, it is uh, released formally in the uh, appropriate uh, market or organizations. Sometimes the product deployment happens in these stages as uh, per the business strategy of organization. So these are the stages. Uh, so the product uh, may first be uh, released in a limited segment. But it is not necessary. If uh, the workers or employees are trained, then no need. But if they are not trained, uh, it should be released in uh, limited segments and uh, tested in all business environment. So another way is a parallel conversion. Uh, in this, what happens means run both system, existing system and the new system for uh, some specific time, one month, two months, three months, six months, and so on, that the users may be trained and the available data in the existing system may be transferred to new system because uh, it takes the time. So the existing data should be transferred to new system. So, and uh, the user may be trained. So in this, both systems are running for some specific time. Third one is the phased conversion. Means install the software, 
install the system into some phases. For example, uh, first of all, uh, install the software at the reception, then uh, to uh, the reception should work, then to uh, another portion of the organization, then another unit, then another unit. So in this, you may install the software in a different phase, two phase, three phase, five phase, and so on. So it depends on the even the pilot conversion may be done. So trainers and support customers are critical in this way. This is a very critical uh, phase. So decisions may have taken uh, carefully, but uh, uh, mostly these phases are successful parallel and uh, phased. But the digitally developed organization go for uh, this conversion. So if uh, you look at uh, this system, uh, this is the, the conversion, uh, the direct system conversion, what happened, old system um, is uh, replaced with the new system, the direct conversion. In parallel system, uh, old system and the new systems are uh, running together, but after some time, like if you hear, after some time, uh, the old system is uh, replaced. Means the uh, old system is uh, not used after the, uh, uh, Shifting up data and understanding the new system. In the phase systems, uh, what happens, uh, system is uh, installed in the different phases, segments, unit-wise. So this is the conversion. And phase five is uh, maintenance. Maintenance is an important job. Uh, so in this, what happened? IT professionals continue to monitor the software. Uh, now that may be the, the internal organization, uh, IT professionals, they want to and live in the uh, in software industry also uh, be connected to the organization. So they continue to monitor their, if any bug uh, or error occurs, uh, it may be fixed at a time that customers and clients uh, uh, do not face any problem. and. Uh, and maintenance and maintenance what happens because with the experience uh, sometimes we think that these features may be added so new features uh, may be added to the software also so it um, occurs uh, because of the maintenance and the user often suggest bugs uh, features because <clears throat> user is a more uh, competent uh, more no more than the developer user may say no there's a bug in the storage, there may be a bug in the insertion and input process or process process or output. So bug may be identified and they may be fixed at the time. So maintenance process is a very good uh, for any software or information system. Another system, uh, so it's also evolving uh, uh, system design methods also. Is what problems with this SDLC? What are the problems with the SDLC? SDLC is an old process, no doubt. And it is a silo because it works in the, its uh, continuous steps. So company need to respond quickly in this uh, fast word. Everyone need a quick response. Therefore, these are the, some drawbacks of the SDLC, our system development life cycle. Another system is a rapid application design that may be used to develop the information system. So the, it uh, develops uh, information systems uh, quickly. Uh, this is a fast than the SDLC, uh, but the slightly and also slightly different development phases. So what happens in this? <clears throat> Phase one is the same, require the data, find out the problem, uh, collect the requirement of the organization and users and analyze and run the solution. And in phase two, in phase two, uh, design the software, uh, as per the requirement and the process. And in phase three, uh, rapid construction. Now what happens? Sometimes user is in a hurry. And sometimes uh, software industry is in a hurry because of the heavy workload. So they want to develop the system. So in this uh, rapid construction occurs. So phase four is a transition. Now in this whole software is not developed. But software develops in the uh, units. So first you have developed the reception software, and then you have the industry develop the another unit of software, then other units of software. So even organization get benefit that it gets the solution in uh, units uh, in phases. So this is uh, very fast, and uh, its transition is uh, completed. 
maintain the maintenance process occurs and maintenance process i discussed to you previous slide so rate phase uh, what happened in this the requirement planning requirements for the project are defined joint requirement planning uh, occurs means involves programmers and managers means managers from the organization and programmers from the software industry both uh, discuss the problem and uh, along with uh, that they are working on the development as well so managers from affected departments provide guidance and uh, they require data time to time is per requirement of the programmers and um, in phase 2 user design means again joint uh, application design system analysis and the users are uh, working together so user provides the details uh, of the organization or the problems there the problems to design the proper software so self software uh, innovates solve the technical details of what are uh, collected to the users and in uh, phase 3 that is the rapid construction so information system professionals develop the project and a variety of tools can be used to develop the project faster and properly and users approve each portion means uh, as i told you for example a portion of the reception is developed it will be uh, approved uh, the, by the users so because it will be uh, so it will be handed over to uh, organization and concerned user and managers will take it and the finally get approved and then the other portion will be developed so it works in the segments and uh, then the transition phase four so system is a tested each segment is a tested on the sample data and uh, then users are trained on the sample data what data is given by the organization that data may be uh, inputted inserted and user may be trained on that uh, that data that how this application or the information system works so new systems run parallel to existing system and this this happens means you cannot change or replace the existing system with the new system directly but you have to run both systems um, continue till the uh, complete system may be installed in the system so phase complete when bugs are gone means when the software is uh, free of bugs free of errors then the uh, this phase will be complete and then the old system also removed because new system is a completely installed and then the old system will be removed and in the phase 5 maintenance i discussed you already this is a very important tradition is not part of the raid but all systems need periodic maintenance to uh, monitor the software to run the software properly and to uh, facilitate the organization in the proper way that uh, organization it's a users the managers uh, cannot uh, face the problems another method that is different than the uh, rapid development and the sdlc and other system that is the object uh, oriented system uh, analysis is a uh, different uh, uh, means the usa so the project elements are uh, defined uh, in the <clears throat> defined using the objects uh, and objects are self contained programming constructs objects have a data and uh, functionality as well so objects are linked uh, uh, together with each other java and c++ uh, or python Uh, typical tools uh, languages for development of the information system using the object oriented system analysis and design so object oriented development and this what happened object is a basic unit of the system analysis and design is each unit is a object each, each unit of the organization is a object so object combines the data and process that uh, that operate on uh, those data and the data encapsulated in uh, uh, object can be uh, accessed and modified only by operations or methods or associated with uh, that object so all uh, units may be connected to each other object oriented modeling based on concepts of the class and inheritance now class may be your organization and inheritance of uh, the of part so objects belong to a certain class and to have a features of that class that what are the features attributes of that class may inherit structures and behaviors of more general ancestral class this is a very uh, modern uh, model uh, that works very good in development of the software information systems and so on 
So object oriented development uh, in this more iterative and incremental than the traditional structure of the development like the SDLC and uh, rapid five development, uh, rapid application development, so on. So in this system analysis occurs. Now what happens in system analysis <clears throat> is interactions between the system and users are analyzed to uh, identify the objects. It's important. Uh, that both are analyzed and then, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, and then the design phase after the same means gather the data, analyze the data, analyze the users, analyze the problems of users, the user may be internal, external, and identify the objects, use unit, what is the purpose of that unit. So both uh, objects and solution may be prepared to present to the managers or CEO or the head of the organization. And then uh, after the uh, approval of uh, that solution, uh, the uh, software industry or the software house or the development team go for the design phase. I mean, or the software engineers uh, go for the design phase. So in design phase, they, uh, it describes the, how object will be behave and interact with each other or grouped into classes and subclasses and uh, uh, hierarchies. So these all things are designed and again, uh, these are uh, presented to the uh, related persons. And uh, after the uh, development of the information system implementation occurs, so some classes may be reused from existing uh, library. This is a very great benefit of the object-oriented uh, development. These you may use even the uh, already available classes. You may you reuse them uh, from existing library of classes and other classes uh, may be created or inherited as per the requirement of the uh, unit of the organization. So because objects, um, reusable object oriented development can potentially reduce time and cost of the development and this affect even on the organization's cost. Another uh, technique is the computer aided software engineering. So software tools uh, to automate uh, development and reduce the repetitive work including. And this uh, repetitive work is uh, reduced at a uh, high level. But, and also graphics facilitates for producing the charts and the diagrams and even uh, different. Uh, so this may help uh, the reports as well and help the managers, CEOs and other related persons to get the uh, data and graphs and charts, uh, rather to read the whole reports and waste the time. Chart and graphs give you uh, rapid information. Means you see and you take the, the information. Screens and reports generators provided by user case in the computer aided software engineering. So reporting facilities even it provide to you and analysis analysis and checking tools. Data dictionaries are there, so the different terms uh, are, are stored there that if someone searches or the related page or data may be presented to that. And code and documentation generators are also uh, there and it provide you. So support iterative design by automating the reviews and changes and providing prototyping facilities and the required organizational discipline to be used effectively uh, in this way. So uh, I discussed uh, these things uh, to you. Uh, so I tried to uh, describe the different methods to develop the uh, information system uh, that is a very significant and important for the, the organizations, corporations, and uh, modern world. Uh, uh, institutions, public and private institutions even. So hope uh, this lecture will help you in making the software and the getting concept of uh, and building the information system. I uh, will uh, see you again in uh, another lecture. Uh, till that, to take care of you. And if you have not uh, subscribed to my channel, please subscribe it uh, now and press the bell icon button that you may get the notifications and uh, of my upcoming lectures, tutorials and talks. Okay, take care. Allah peace.